thousand crowd might have gone home wondering if an all too rare Darlington bubble had burst already. Every time there seems to be a revival, you know, they seem to get the rug pulled from under the feet and it's kind of happened a wee bit tonight like that, you know, but uh, I don't think we should be too disappointed, you know, because they saw the test. There's a rare scent of promotion at Freetons these days and David Burton now reports on Darlington's latest attempt to consolidate their top four place. For skipper David McLean leading his side out onto a rain-sodden feet and pitch, this season's success is a reward for loyalty. 220 plus league appearances make him the Quakers' longest serving player. And McLean will acknowledge that much of the credit goes to the boss, Cyril Knowles, that stylish former Tottenham and England fullback of Get nice it. one fame. Get it. Yesterday's opponents were Chester City. Donington played them here in the FA Cup first round in two weeks' time. The visitors were solidly mid-table, and the Quakers, having lost just once in the league all season, knew that three points were a must. Knowles' side doesn't boast any stars, but like all lower division managers, he's wheeled and dealed to assemble the best possible lineup. Former Middlesbrough striker Gary McDonald is his latest acquisition. McDonald came on a free from Carlisle ten days ago. The fellow striker Kevin Todd, once of Newcastle, looks a good player at this level. His pace and aggression have brought him four goals before yesterday, making him joint leading scorer with Carl Airy, a bustling centre forward signed recently from Barnsley for £6,000. Twelve months ago, such a sum would have been an unthinkable extravagance. No Foy side dominate the early stages, and Darlington's aerial power gave the Chester defence constant problems. Only a desperate goal line clearance kept McDonald's header out. You stand the way, you don't push! Go on, Johnny! But the pressure had to tell, and midfield general David McLean took full advantage of a needless handball to put the home side ahead from the penalty spot after 17 minutes. Eight minutes later, and the Quakers, thanks to this powerful header from Kevin Todd, were two up and looking good for a comfortable win. Perhaps the vile conditions bogged them down, but Darlington weren't able to sustain the onslaught to the relief of Chester keeper John Butcher. The first half hour had seen the Quakers play their best football of the season, but Knowles, who 16 months ago swapped his coach's job at Middlesbrough to be his own boss here, wasn't dishing out compliments at the interval. Hey, just let's settle down. Let's cool it a bit, man. Just let him get back in the game. All you've got to do is keep cool, right? Don't lose the discipline. But you've got to keep working together. You've done, you've done well. Just the edge of the tooth, Gary, won't it? You know, you've done well. Don't worry, son. Just keep going. With the feet and floodlight shining ever more brightly through the murk, the crowd changed ends during half-time. 2,400 braved the elements yesterday. A year ago, the gate would have been half that. As the second half floundered in the mud, Chester narrowed the gap through Peter Zellum. These were anxious moments for the Darlington bench. With seconds remaining, the unthinkable nearly happened. But Darlington keeper Fred Barber gathered bravely at the feet of Chester's Andy Higgins to ensure three precious points for his side. Two won the final score, and the Quakers were now just three points behind new fourth division leaders Berry. The manager puts it all down to teamwork. We've got a good spirit about the place, and uh, I don't know if it's been like years gone by, but we've certainly got one now, not only from the playing side, but in the office and all the way around. It's been tremendous, actually. The important question, will you still be there in a promotion place in May? Oh, uh, I hope so. I mean, uh, what I've seen so far, we can compete with them, no problem at all. But it's like I said to the players at 5 to 3, once you step out on the carpet, it's down to you collectively. You know, I mean, I can prepare them and all this and that, but at the end of the day, once they're out there, and one of nine clubs from outside the Football League involved in the second round. This week, Harry Gration went to South Yorkshire to see how all the current problems within the coal industry are affecting the... Person. ...soon realised the pitch would be the key factor. But nothing could chill the enthusiasm of the Darlington fans who swelled the crowd to a remarkable 19,000. And it was the fourth division side who soon reminded us they were the team in form, with Kevin Smith keeping O'Hanlon alert. Darlington continued to take the game to their alleged superiors. Defenders were always going to find the going tough, and some early confusion in the Borough defence saw Irving Natras close to turning.